going to be talking about the Sputnik alien. I think these are the official guys who actually did the visual effects. And just looking at this alien, it looks so much like a cross between a cobra, a jumping spider, and the Cloverfield monster. This monster is very well designed. I do absolutely love the design of this creature. It's terrifying. And as small as it is, it can still do so much damage. The creature has arms and legs, which tells us that it, wherever it came from, did live on land. This is not a predominantly aquatic creature. It's possible that the creature probably lived on what we can consider trees on its planet. It has an amazing ability to leap very far and to climb up things very fast. However, it does walk awkwardly on the ground. It's obviously predatory, as we can see its entire chest and the underside of its face is comprised of a huge mouth or teeth, which it uses to rip things to shreds, including humans. Its long tail, the way that its fingers are shaped on each of its limbs, tells us and confirms that this creature, in fact, did live on high up structures or trees. Its tail could have been used to wrap around things. The little cobra thing on its head probably was used for intimidation and breeding, also could be used as a sort of gliding mechanism from tree to tree. It's very spider-like in a lot of the ways that it moves and the way that it looks. Four toes on each foot. It's a new definition to spider monkey, if I may say so myself. The creature being so aggressive means that it's highly territorial, probably the apex predator and where it comes from. It's probably an ambush predator as well. These apparatuses on the top of its head look to me like their nostrils. I don't know what these are. I guess they could be sensory or maybe that's how it hears. We definitely know that this creature relies a lot on sight. The thing has eight eyes. And you can see, looking at it head on, that it is heavily inspired by a spider. Even its teeth, the way that the spider's fangs hang down below its eight eyes, that it is essentially a spider creature or a creature that filled the same role as a spider. Now, just looking at the creature, you probably are wondering, well, why does the creature have eight eyes? And do the other creatures on its planet also have eight eyes? Well, judging from this creature being a leaping creature, it would make sense and this is further confirmation based on its anatomical structure and these features that it in fact did either live up in high places or has to transport itself that way. Its mobility is primarily jumping probably and climbing up high places and jumping from place to place as I said before since it has a gliding mechanism on the top half part of its body. When we look up why spiders need all the eyes that they have, you know that they usually have two front eyes and they have several other different eyes around the top part of their heads. Now I did look this up because it's very fascinating. A lot of these aliens, since they are designed from the idea of animals that we have today or that we've seen at the bottom of the ocean, <laughs> they usually take a lot of inspiration from that. We have to look at how those animals hunt, how they evolve and why they look like that. So I looked into jumping spiders and it says that jumping spiders are active hunters, like tiny lions chasing down their prey, which are bugs. They usually have eight eyes, two very large front eyes to get a clear color image and judge distance and extra side eyes to detect when something is moving. As for the spiders that make nets to catch their prey, they need to see clearly and judge distances. Some of these spiders are nicknamed ogre spiders and they have these gigantic eyes on the top of their heads right facing forward like staring into your soul to help the spider see wide area and accurately throw down its spider web or its net to catch its prey. There are even spiders that don't need eyes that evolved in caves and they either lost the ability to see or lost their eyes altogether. Also, humans have two eyes because we can turn our necks and we evolve differently in our surroundings. Spiders don't have necks, so they can't turn their heads to look at things. That's part of the reason why they have extra eyes around their heads. They need to be able to spot prey and other predators that might want to eat the spider as well. Also consider that these are simpler creatures. Human eyes can do many different things, but the spiders have different eyes for doing different things. The two largest eyes in the middle of the spider or at least the eyes of those in jumping spiders are best for seeing shapes. The other eyes keep them alert and watchful for predators. Now, even though it's totally plausible that this creature could have a predator that hunts it, you notice that the eyes are not facing backwards. Though this creature does have eight eyes, they're all pointing forward. It's possible that its early ancestor probably looks something like a spider. I think these eight eyes have now evolved to judge distance more correctly. And I'm talking about far distances. We look at monkeys and other creatures or arboreal organisms 
organisms that live in trees and jump from tree to tree. They usually don't have to jump that far. It's kind of impossible for them to jump that far. Even the gliding snake or the flying snake as we call it has very large eyes, larger than most of its counterparts for seeing and judging distance. They need to have binocular vision so they can see where they're going to land and aim correctly. But even these flying snakes, or I like to call them gliding snakes, <laughs> they don't have very far to fall or to fly. They basically fill the same niche as a monkey and that's how they will find their food or escape other predators. Their bodies being flattened also reduces the chances of them getting hurt if they land on something. They mostly occupy the skies or gliding from tree to tree or canopy to canopy because they hunt creatures mostly that live in the trees. The snake also uses this as a hunting tactic, so if it sees something from far away, it can leap pretty accurately right beside the prey. Bing! Dinner is served. Now terrifying that would be if I was a freaking lizard dude. Holy shit. Snakes like this, how I slide into your DMs, sup girl. I think the Sputnik creature operates in the same way. It can probably judge distance and shapes even better than we can or better than the flying snake can or any other creature that we have on Earth with binocular vision. Judging from the fact it also has the mouth on its face or right on its underside, that lets me think that when this creature jumps off from a high spot and it targets something in a tree or somewhere below, it uses as a tactic as a way to ambush its prey. But also, think about it. When it jumps, the front of its body is what's gonna hit the ground or another tree or structure first. It gives no time for the prey to get away. It instantly jumps on it and the prey is just swallowed up by a mouth. We can see that in the way it moves and it hunts things in the movie as well, as you can see. It leaps from where it is and remember there are no structures around them. I'm pretty sure that it would be even better of a hunter if it wasn't its natural environment. But then. As soon as it leaps, boom. It looks like it just chopped his head in half, to be honest. Yeah, I look back at the video. I think it did chop its head, the guy's head clean off. Holy crap, what the hell are its bones made of? It's kind of terrifying. Holy shit, dude. Okay, so I don't know who would be hunting this thing. Chances are there probably aren't a lot of predators that would kill it. I think that wherever it came from, it lives high in structures or trees or whatever you would consider trees on its planet. And it is the apex predator for that world. I'm pretty sure there are other predators on the ground or in the water. Sorry, I gotta stop doing that. <laughs> but judging from the fact that this thing has its eight eyes on the front of its face, that's for judging distance, shapes, and everything else. It has no eyes on its back. Its eyes are only forward facing. That means it doesn't have to worry about other predators or it at least evolved to not have to worry about other predators. What's really confounding and intriguing about this creature as well is that it is also a parasite. So maybe it starts off as a parasite like a wasp and then it becomes a predator later. Just like we have parasitic wasps that lay their larvae within insects and then when they grow up they mostly eat nectar or other insects, I think this creature does the opposite. It's funny because non-parasitoid or non-parasitic wasps usually are predators or scavengers. They'll feed on dead animals, they'll hunt insects, spiders, and all manner of different prey so that they can survive. But parasitic wasps that lay their babies inside other creatures, they get most of their protein from the host as they are growing, as they're eating out the creature their mother laid them in. Then when they grow up, I guess they have all the protein they ever needed, so then they just drink nectar. I guess nature's already like, look, you've done all your evil as a baby, so for the rest of your life, just drink honey. You've done enough. It's freaking nasty, dude. Ooh. My thing is, what does this creature look like before? And if it's already an apex predator, why does it need to be a parasite if it's totally capable of hunting and killing its prey? Did it squeeze in at its full body like this? Does it have the ability to squish itself into a small ball to get into a human? Or does it need to be a parasite earlier on in its reproductive stage or in its life cycle? And then this is what it becomes later. I don't know, but there's still so much to know about this creature. I really am excited to see Sputnik. And if you guys have made it this far, what do you think about this alien? We're gonna wanna see it in action. My thing is, if this is an actual scene from the movie, why the frick did they let it out? Anyways, thanks so much for watching. This has been Elsiori. You ask, we answer.